Options right around the world. Thank you so much for joining me in this weekend market update. What a fantastic week we have seen just take place. A lot of profitable trades stemming from that pro analysis class. As I count it, at this particular moment in time, we have four from four in the way of profitable trades from the weekend. And we have, this is what gets even more exciting, we have a potential four more very nice trades beginning the 1st of June 2015, which I have just walked through. That analysis recording is up on the Pro website, the private area. For those of you who are not familiar with Pro, I encourage you to sign in, have a look, take the educational workshop because you are going to learn a bunch about trading, trade analysis, technical analysis, and how the bigger picture of market analysis influences our individual stocks, which we swing trade from week to week. What I'll do right now, however, is just walk through some of those trades, or at least the four trades, which have triggered and have continued as at the week just gone. Then I'll encourage, or at least walk through the four additional trades forward looking. And then we'll have a look at the market update and talk about the transportation average, maybe even the dollar which will round us out on this particular weekend analysis. What I'd like to do is just start with Boeing Airlines. This is a trade which we've been keeping a close eye on for a period of about two to three weeks right now. We had an entry here at 143.79 and we're trading at 140.52. It has been a nice little profitable trade, about $3.20 at this particular moment in time. Nice little trade when you factor in puts or trading puts or options, as a matter of fact, instead of just selling short the individual stock. I've walked through the stops in that analysis class, the trade management around that trade, a very nice trade as at this particular weekend. The second stock which I wanted to speak about was Caterpillar. Now, Caterpillar had a nice little entry here at $86.36. We're trading at $85.32. Now this at this particular moment of time has only made a dollar of profit in those puts. But what is exciting about this trade is the fact that we, I believe, are establishing a channel. And the good news about the channel is that we are at the top of the channel and we have an ultimate target down here at $78.71. So what we've done at the moment is that we've staked a position, a really nice looking position. Have a look at the overbought nature of Caterpillar. You can see that we're getting a very strong bearish cross on the Stokes, on the RSI, and the MACD. The MACD is oscillating back down. We've got a risk and reward trade, a risk and reward ratio on this trade of over six to one when we break it down. So a really nice trade set up on Caterpillar. Again, it's only profitable via a dollar or, or a dollar, but we have the opportunity to make another $6 on top of that profit we've already made in Caterpillar. So I'm very excited to see how the week progresses with this particular trade. Let me just speak about CVX. CVX has been another beautiful trade, something which we got into about two weeks ago and we've seen the continuation to the downside. Our initial entry, 105.41, two weeks ago. Secondary entry, 104.58. We're trading at 103 on the daily. Three spinning top candlesticks, almost a hangman on the Thursday. Ultimate target is still down at 101.18. So a nice little profitable trade here. Will we get there? I don't know. I simply don't know. And to be frank, it doesn't really bother me whatsoever. We've got to stop here at 103.71. We are guaranteed a profit on CVX, which is great to know. We probably will hit 101.18, but it's stress-free profit. We've made profit on this trade and it doesn't matter the outcome or what happens next. Either we're going to consolidate that profit and hit 101.18 or we're going to get stopped out and just lock in that profit in our bank. The other additional trade was one which I brought to you in YouTube actually was XOM. 86.29 was the original entry. We're only trading down at 85.20. It is about a dollar and ten cents move. A nice little move. Again, looking for that channel consolidation to really set up resistance support. We are oscillating between the two, and we're moving back down into that lower resistance area. They are four trades, very oh, four very open trades, which I've just referenced as per that pro class. What is exciting? As I sit down and record this analysis, this weekend analysis is that we have got some really great trade setups which haven't triggered. And these trades we've been following for about two weeks right now. I'll give you the ticker symbols, but I won't go through the analysis. Apple is one. Pay attention to Apple. If you want to learn the trade setup, have a look at Pro. We've got an incredible trade on Amazon, a very, very neutral trade on Amazon, which is set to move quite a lot. And when I mean quite a lot, I'm talking about maybe $10 plus of intrinsic value, either on calls or puts, depending on the directional break, which it has. Outside of that, Baidu, another incredible trade setup, which has taken some time to form. 
We've been stalking this trade much like Caterpillar, which we've just entered into, but Baidu is the next trade, which is looking exceptionally good. Outside of that, IBM is another great bi-directional trade setup. Now, these are four immediate trades which haven't triggered, but the analysis is in the pro class on our website. I encourage you to have a look. Outside of that, other trades are maturing. We've got Goldman Sachs and Tesla, which are set to move. I'm not sure if they're going to trade this week or trigger this week, but definitely within the next two weeks, we are paying very close attention to those outside of the list. What I said I'd do in this particular video is also give you a very brief and quick market update. The larger format is in that pro area, but if I change to the weekly chart, I made this quite clear to people in that class is that we have got simply an evening star reversal candlestick pattern. This is on a weekly time frame. What I want you to pay attention to is the week in between. This is what we call a shooting star. This week, we sort of, or we more so confirm the actual structure of the pattern. I want you to pay attention to this trend line. This is an accelerated trend line, which has started earlier in the year. You can see we've got a point here, a second point, and three points along this way. It, it looks as though we're flirting with the breakdown of this trend line. And if this occurs, we've got some really good targets, 17,690. Secondary target down here at 17,205. That's the immediate outlook on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It fits with a lot of trades that we are personally in, and they're starting to align very, very nicely. The S&P is a market which is very, very similar. You can see we have an ascending type of triangle. Now, it looks as though we had a false break to the upside. This is just a weekly chart once again. You can see a very similar shooting star candlestick right here. If you can, if you can combine, pardon me, the past three weeks, once again, we have another evening star reversal candlestick pattern. You can go back and have a look at February 20, this particular candlestick, not only on the S&P, but also on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Although we didn't see continued commitment to the, to the downside, it did usher in another bearish week for the Dow Jones, for the S&P, and also for the NASDAQ. What this is doing right now is really just combining the sentiment, the psychology of market participants at this location, and it really looks and feels and smells as if we are really waning in momentum to the upside. You can see this variation of hanging top candlesticks, these inside day bearish Harami candlesticks, and also outside day candlesticks, really suggesting that we are going to see a potential correction in the overall markets. The oscillators support it. Have a look at the Stokes. Have a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They're all giving us sell signals. The only thing which we are waiting on is final confirmation of the move to establish itself on the markets themselves. It looks as if there's a bit of a storm or a rain, a rain cloud in the distance, it's approaching and we're just waiting in order to bring out the umbrellas when it starts to rain. We've got a lot of trades which are presenting really, really nicely and forward looking into the upcoming week's worth of trading. Finally, to round out, I'll bring up the Dow Jones Transportation Average. You can go back on the YouTube uh, channel and have a look at this trade update. This was going back, I think, three or four weeks now, but really the divergence established itself in March 2015. Speaking about the divergence between the transport in the industrials, just how important that is according to Dow Theory. A lot of people don't place too much emphasis on the analysis of Dow Theory, but I find it to be absolutely remarkable. What I'll, what I'll do is I'll overlay it with the industrial average. And we were simply speaking about how it's only a matter of time until one of these markets changes its current course to catch up with its counterpart. Now, as you can see, the Dow Jones Transportation's breaking below 8,471, another trade trigger, which has probably been on here for two weeks or one week at least, definitely referenced it because we were at a macro support area. And we were saying that one of these markets, again, is going to turn down, the Dow Jones will turn down, all the transports will turn up, and they are going to meet in the distance. At this particular moment in time or in the future, at this particular moment in time, you can see the Dow Jones Industrials as at this week, uh, is starting to turn down. It's almost as if we've got a false breakout to the upside, and it looks as though we are going to see a correction in the equity markets, similar to that of, ch of chasing the Dow Jones transportation average. I'm going to keep a very close eye on this relationship as we move and progress further into June 2015. Outside of this analysis, one further market which I want to pay attention to right now is the US dollar index. Again, we've been bullish on the US dollar right down into this one spinning top candlestick right here. Check this date right here. What was the date of this video? It was the 15th of May. Have a look on YouTube, it'll be there. We were calling for the continuation of the bullish rally in the US dollar. Just because I'm calling for it doesn't mean that I'm entering into this myself. I did not trade UUP higher. I was just calling for the establishment of the bullish trend. Since we've broken out in mid 2014, we've been on an absolutely incredible 
bullish move on the US dollar. Since then, we've pulled back slightly. A lot of people were concerned about a potential double top. I find this interesting because right now, we're either at the neckline and we are going to pull back, maybe set up a continued channel, okay, channel on the US dollar, which will ultimately break to the upside. Or in fact, looking at this, it looks awfully similar to that of a bull flag. Both will play out in the bullish direction. It's just a matter of time frame or your time frame and how long you have for that bull market to continue or at least to move itself back up to that 100 area on the index. So pay attention to the US dollar. In the past, it's had an inverse relationship with equity prices, but most recently, that's sort of been tossed out the window and these have been more or less working in conjunction with one another. You can see the bullish trend in the US dollar has lined very well with the bullish trend of the underlying market. Most recently on equity prices, we have fallen or we've, we haven't fallen, sorry, we've stag stagnated and we've been moving sideways. The US dollar has pulled back a little bit, but if you look at the bigger picture, we are in some form of consolidation on the US dollar at this particular moment in time. I'll leave it at that for this particular market update. I only did one video during the week. It was a shortened week because of the Memorial Day holiday, and I hope you had a special day on the Monday. Outside of that, we were bearish, and the net movement on the weekly chart of the Dow Jones was quite minuscule. I mean, that's not the Dow Jones, that's the S&P. The S&P was down 18 points, but on the weekly chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it was down 221. So at least we're seeing a little bit of movement in conjunction or in comparison to the week we saw before that, where the net movement uh, was just, just marginal. I mean, it was five trading sessions of absolutely nothing. So at least we're seeing a little, a little bit of momentum. And that is really flowing through to individual trades, which we follow in that pro analysis list. So I'd encourage you to have a look at those trades or at that, at that educational facility. It's great. I've just recorded it. It is up online. And um, if you're curious at all, email me success at pivotpoint-trading.com or even schedule a call. I'm always happy to speak to new people. And of course, uh, long-term students who are interested in trading the financial market. It's a great discussion we had at the end of class as well about the potential of leap options given what this market is doing, using them as a little bit of a hedge only upon further confirmation, all right? Not just yet, but it could be a really exceptional trade idea moving forward or further into 2015, maybe even into early 2016. So I'll leave it at that. Have a great weekend, traders all around the world. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you most likely on Monday for the continuation of market commentary. All the best, everyone. Goodbye.